Yes, today we want to talk uh, about a very important topic, and that topic is very, very, very important in economics. Uh, and that topic is inflation. Uh, inflation is the general increase in the prices of goods and services. Right. Uh, we are saying when we see there is a general increase uh, in the prices of a number of goods and services, uh, I want you to understand clear. Today, if you go to a shop, if you see the price of a chocolate, maybe yesterday it was uh, 15 rand or $1.50, and tomorrow it's $1.8 or $2, right? We don't talk of there is inflation because it's just one product. But then when you see there is a general increase in the price of goods and services, that milli meal, oil, the prices of everything in the economy is just increasing. Uh, the prices of machinery they is increasing each and every day. That's whereby we talk of what? Inflation. And there are quite a number of uh, reason that actually causes uh, inflation. We can classify them as a cost push or a demand between causes. Right. Uh, for example, uh, if economies are not run well, right, if there is a lot of misallocation of resources, this can also lead to inflation. Right. Uh, we are saying uh, when the resources they are not actually put in their rightful uses, right? Uh, it means the economy will not actually perform. So when products are not efficiently allocated, they are not actually put on the right uses, it means we are wasting, right? So at the end of the day, we, we actually have an increase in the prices of goods and services. Again, if there is too much money in the circulation, it means people, they would demand for more goods and services, right? Uh, if there is a lot of money that is circulating in the economy, that is why you see it is actually the, the duty of the government to monitor when the economy is performing well. That is why you see the government, when they see that there is too much money in the economy, they can offer bonds or some promising bills to businesses so that those businesses, they can give the government money and then they get these treasury bonds or these bills, right? In that way, the government can reduce inflation in that there won't be a lot of money in the circulation. Because when there is a lot of money in circulation, it means people, they will demand more goods and services. And if people demand more goods and services, uh, businesses, they will be forced to increase their prices because a lot of businesses they are driven by the profit motive so uh, a lot of money in circulation uh, it stimulates demand and you know when demand rises right it's usually accompanied by price by, by an increase in prices so that trend it, if it continues it will actually generate to an increase in the price of goods and services like countries like germany and zimbabwe at one point they experienced what you call hyperinflation whereby the prices of goods and services they will be increasing on a daily basis or on an hourly basis and it means that uh, you will be buying few goods with a lot of money. You know, in inflation, 
you end up like putting monies in wheelbarrows and carrying monies in bags where too much money fetches few goods that's what we call inflation where there is a general increase in the prices of goods and services that is what we call inflation so we have to know the causes of inflation right of which the main cause of inflation is uh, the demand of products right so if products are scarce if products are not available uh, it means uh, producers they are actually forced to increase the prices because they know that uh, customers they don't have any option they have to buy those products so this will actually stimulate inflation again when a country is under sanctions right it cannot be able to trade with other countries again it will also stimulate inflation uh, again in the unavailability of um, goods and services or of natural resources it also leads to inflation and again uh, when a country does not even have access to foreign currency it means they cannot buy goods that, that they actually need to produce for example if south africa is failing to get foreign currency they cannot be able to import things like drugs they cannot be able to, in, to, to import those things that they don't have they cannot be able to import petroleum products especially if that country cannot actually produce those products in each one so at the end of the day it means those those products they will be on demand but those products are not actually available so definitely that again will also stimulate inflation so inflation is something that is not good because a lot of people they will not have access to goods and services and if a country is facing inflation it will have up it will end up like having higher levels of unemployment it happened to zimbabwe there was a hyperinflation uh, and this hyperinflation it will lead to political unrest a lot of people they will lose their jobs a lot of people they will end up into different into different social ills like they will end up in uh, into robbery they will end up into drugs they will end up into promiscuation uh, so inflation it has got detrimental effects and it's not a good thing that is actually allowed